Welcome to the St. Thomas More Lynchburg's homily podcast. We join Father John Christian as he brings his insight and application to the readings for the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. It was in 1925 that Pope Pius XI established this particular solemnity with his encyclical Quas Primas. The Roman pontiff, looking into the signs of the times, felt moved to establish this relatively new, modern, and recent solemnity, that of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. And so if we consider what was going on in the world or what had been going on in the world up until that point, we can kind of see what the Holy Father was thinking about. For this solemnity is to establish the fact that, or rather to reinforce that secularism is not a good thing, but that God must be kept at the center of all human activity. For in just a few preceding years earlier, the world had seen its first iteration of world war. The understanding of armed conflict changed after that war. It was, you could say, perhaps the first mechanized war. It was the first time tanks were seen. It's the first time bombs were dropped from airplanes. It's the first time machine guns were widely used. The first use of poison gas on the battlefield. Human beings had not so ever efficiently killed each other at that time, up to that point, until that war. The only things that killed more up until that point were epidemics. And so we see a world in turmoil, and we see man's hatred of man and the great violence that could break out. But we also saw geopolitical instability and turmoil. Three kind of great nations were overthrown in that same time period. We saw the Bolshevik overthrow of Russia. We saw the dissolution of the German Empire and the Kaiser was deposed. We saw the dissolution of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the deposing of that emperor, one of the last kind of great Catholic monarchs. And so we see all of this, these old established things kind of crumbling to pieces. And so the Roman pontiff, looking at the situation, at least in the West, realized that the faithful need to be reminded and encouraged by the fact that there is something permanent and stable. There is the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ, who supersedes all earthly and temporal authority. The crown and authority that our Lord Jesus Christ bears reaches across all of time and space and into all human hearts. Our Lord Jesus Christ is indeed our one true king. We are all first and foremost his subjects. We belong to him for it was God who made us. And so it's interesting for us to kind of reflect on our Lord Jesus Christ in the role of a king. It's kind of, again, an interesting thing, given that this was a solemnity established in 1925. The concept and idea of monarchy is one that fast is vanishing from the earth. And as Americans, it can kind of make our post-enlightenment Republican sensibilities kind of bristle a little bit to think of the concept of monarchy and the obsequiousness that kind of we associate with that. However, I would argue that in this case, it is perfectly fine and appropriate. For if there is anyone to be obsequious towards, to grovel in front of, to fall on one's knees before, it is the Lord God Almighty. No authority on earth has such a claim on us, but the God who made us does indeed have a claim on us, a claim to our fealty and our love a claim on our pious devotion and our duty. Throughout history, we've seen countless instances of men answering the call to arms to go and die on account of a king or at the word of a king. Our Lord Jesus Christ flips that, completely inverts it. He shows us a king who comes and suffers and dies for his subjects. And so our Lord himself gives us the model of what that love and devotion looks like. And so on this solemnity, it is good for us to reflect on our Lord Jesus Christ as our king, as the one who wields all cosmic and temporal authority across all time and space, across all political boundaries, across all races, all peoples, and everything, everyone, and everywhere. Our Lord Jesus Christ is our one true king. Heaven is our one true homeland. And we hope to call ourselves citizens of that homeland. And that is through him, through his love 
and through his mercy. And so it's important for us on this day to think of our Lord Jesus Christ and to make sure that it is he, he alone, who we have placed on the throne of our hearts and that we are not divided in our allegiance, that we're not divided in our loyalties, but rather we have not enthroned anything or anyone else here in our heart and in our conscience, none other than our Lord Jesus Christ, the God who made us, the God who redeems us, the God who saves us and brings us into eternity with himself, our Lord Jesus Christ and none other. For there are many things that will claim our loyalty, claim our time, claim our energies, and there are many things that we have to do and tend to in this life, but, but we must jealously guard that seat of our heart, that altar and throne that is our innermost heart and reserve that space for the Lord God Almighty, our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, who rules with justice, mercy, goodness, and love. That is the kingdom that he calls us into. That is the kingdom that he laid down his life on behalf of, that each and every one of us might be made part of that, to be with him in all eternity. For he is the good king, the good shepherd, who lays down his life for his sheep. Thank you for tuning in to the St. Thomas More Lynchburg's homily podcast. For the daily reading and to learn more about the community of St. Thomas More, please visit our website at www.stmva.org. If you are blessed by our podcast today, please give it a like, a kind review, and share it with a friend. God bless.